to the channel. Now this, along with this, when put together, make up a beautiful large cookie of brown heart. Now brown heart is uh, also known as wakapo uh, and it's from South America and it's known for its enormous durability, uh, strength uh, and difficulty to turn, which is probably the main reasons I bought it. Uh, now when I ordered this it was in one piece but unfortunately during the journey over to the UK it has uh, now become two. So what I wanted to do is we are going to, I don't think this is fixable in its current state. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to just put glue or epoxy in there to try and put it back together. The reason for that is because if you look at the wood here, there is a reasonable amount of rot. Now, green, uh, sorry, brown heart is known for its durability and its strength and its resistance to rot, but this is obviously being stored quite badly and it's had an awful lot of time to get stuff in there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to surgically remove this center section and do a glow up with a few other pieces of wood in between. Now, this is an incredibly large, heavy piece of wood and I don't have a piece of equipment good enough to make a perfectly straight cut all the way through this. The biggest I can cut is just over 300 mil. So I'm gonna choose a section out of this middle to cut up, cut away, clean up, and then we're gonna insert in two pieces of walnut and a beautiful piece of English oak, like that in the middle. Right, first thing to do is to get this marked up. Now when I cut this up, I need to make sure that I try and take out any of the problems with this kind of rot we've got in the middle. So initially let's take a line through here. That kind of takes us away from most of the problem areas. Okay, we'll do the same with this one. I'll try and keep it parallel so the grain doesn't look strange. Or the grain pattern, sorry, doesn't look strange. It kind of matches. Right, that should be okay. Now the next bit here is to try and imagine a square that we can cut ready for gluing. Now, I'm looking a bit carefully here because obviously I've got more usable wood on this side than I have here, which just kind of le led me to initially, initially think, shall I have this intersection of wood slightly more to one side than running down the center? And that's a reasonable idea. Uh, the only other thing I'm worried about is the density of this wood is an awful lot higher than uh, either oak or walnut. So would that make it unbalanced on the lathe? <laughs> Not that that really has ever bothered me in the past. Right, let's just, okay, let's go for slightly off center. Because I do love the pattern grain in this area. This is fine, this is nice. But if I cut it more out of here, then that again will leave me more usable wood to do something else with from this side. So if I just draw a line perpendicular to those other lines across here, Right, the depth of the wood I'm cutting into it is about uh, two and three quarter inches. So if I allow for that on this side, there's two and three quarter there. Okay, so what we've got now is two possible pieces that we're gonna cut out, get this glued together and start making the bowl from. Now, to give myself a little bit of room for error and the fact that I don't know how far I'm going to have to cut this away to make sure I'm clear of all the rot, I am going to just take it a little bit further up on each side just to give myself a little bit of breathing space. Right, I'm going to grab up 
my saw, cut this up, and I shall see you in a second. Okay, that was a, a dusty experience, but we've got them all cut down, good enough anyway, ready for the next stage. So this one cut down beautifully. As you can see, there's no rot in that whatsoever, apart from beautiful grain. This one, we do have a little bit of rot in that top. I do not want to necessarily cut it down uh, too much further because my clamp wouldn't reach across and I didn't want to necessarily hold this by hand as I was cutting it. So we're just gonna make a note on here so that's going to be the top of the bowl, no matter what. Right, I'm going to go and clear my workbench and then we'll get these set up for gluing. Okay, we're all about ready to start. I've got my glue in an easy to dispense bottle because I've had issues before. Now I've got the clamp set up at pretty much the right kind of length, sorry, the depth for the wood. Uh, but one thing I suddenly noticed is that the, uh, the depth of the grips on the clamps I only go about halfway up on the piece, which isn't going to be ideal. This serves me right for buying cheap clamps. Uh, so I've got another three clamps there, which I'm going to be putting over the top at the end so we can get a nice even grip on all of them. Now I've laid out the pieces in order. So I'm going to lift each one up, glue it, put a small piece of salt on the ends and then put it onto the rack. Now the reason for the salt is because it helps the, the uh, joints to stop slipping. So let's get started. I got a great tip the other day, because I'm not very good at this, and somebody suggested getting a, a spatula to help put the glue on, so that's what I'm using. Certainly easier than fingers. I'm using Tight Bond 3 glue, by the way. It's, uh, it's pretty much lauded as the best glue up glue you can get. And when you're dealing with weights like this, it's not really very prudential to, it's not very wise, I can't even say it. It's not very wise to use cheap uh, glues. A little bit of salt, just a couple of grains, and then on. All right, next piece. I did make a small decision off camera to swap out one of the uh, walnut pieces with another piece of oak because I thought the oak, sorry, the walnut and the uh, brown heart may be too close in colour and it may look a little bit strange. So I think this has a chance to be a bit more of a striking appearance. But of course, I could be wrong. <laughs> a couple of grains of salt. And snug that up. Now, because the weather is getting colder, I'm going to sneak this into the house and dry it in my office, as opposed to leaving it in the workshop. It does need a, a relatively, well, it needs a warmer temperature than it is right now outside for this glue to set properly. So I am gonna take it in to fully cure. I'll keep it clamped for about 24 hours and we can carry on with this tomorrow. It's lined up and starts to tighten. I'm not going to full tightness yet because I want to pull across the top first before I get anything tight all the way. There we go. Right, all we need to do now is get this into the house and wait. Okay, taking the clamps off and it's looking pretty good. I've just taken out uh, a sander and just got this top nice and flat here so I can get a face plate on. Uh, and when I was doing that, I just quickly measured the corners and it's about 17 and a half inches corner to corner, which means that I can turn it over the bed in its current state. So I think we're gonna have a go at that. Uh, originally I was going to turn it 
into a round bowl. But as we've got such a nice piece, let's see if we can turn it as it is. I'm not quite sure exactly how it will go, but as we've got it, may as well try. Okay, we're going to use a faceplate as opposed to a worm screw because this is end grain and worm screws don't work very well on end grain, it's a bit risky. So we're going to screw in a faceplate. Okay, we're on the lathe, tail stuck obviously. I mean, we are pretty safe with the face plate, but this is a very heavy piece, so I'm not going to take any risks whatsoever. Now, I've just uh, checked it for balance. We're going to be turning at about 620 RPM. It does make a little bit of a terrifying noise when it starts to go around, so uh, brace yourself. Uh, I've sharpened up, and we'll get started. I think, first of all, we've got quite a bit of wax on the bottom that it came with, so I'll just scrape that off, see what it's like underneath, and then we'll start trying to create a shape. The, uh, the wax off and I'm really quite pleased. The last time I got a, a piece of wood from the people I bought this off, uh, one side was covered in wax and it was hiding cracks and all goodness knows what, but this is all pretty clean, which is nice. Now we are having a fair bit of tear on the edges, that's because we're turning end grain, all the, the grain in this bit of wood all goes that way, so that is going to happen. Uh, so what we're going to have to do to try and eliminate some of that is start working in this way from the edge. So I'm going to move the banjo out a bit, angle this a tad and start coming across this way to start creating the shape. But so far so good. I mean it is very very hard wood and I think I may at some point be uh, swapping over to a carbide to do some of the shaping because uh, yeah, it's incredibly dense wood. Okay, I'm gonna quickly have a go with the carbide and see what that does to it. I have a feeling it's not gonna do much better. Had something fly off. Yeah, no, carbides <laughs> ain't going to do it with a carbide. Oh wow. All right, back to the ball gouge. Proceed with care, I think. If the worst comes to the worst, we just go around and we'll all be fine. But uh, let's persevere, see if we can, see if we can win. certainly not making things worse, so let's carry on. Okay, now we have lost some wood right up to the corners, 
So a bit of sanding at the end is going to be needed just to sort those out. But I'm still thinking we should carry on with this plan. So next bit, I think I want to try and get a nice curve coming in to about there. And then we're going to be putting a mortise in at the bottom. So we're going to be working in this way and then back out that way. Right, I'm just going to put a mark on the bottom where I want the foot to be. That should do it, I think. most beautiful cuts in the world but certainly effective right that's the diameter of the base so that's fine I do need to flatten it off a, little, off a little bit though but that can wait I'm just going to sharpen up again and just try and get this nice curve going from the base to this top edge once we've got that ooh, that's nice. uh, once we've got that then we can put a, re a, uh, a mortise in and then start sanding. Yay! Excellent. Right, now for a brief scary moment, we're going to take away the tailstock, put in the mortise, or the recess, whatever you want to call it, and then we can start sanding. bits but that's fine. Right, I'm going to set up for sanding. I'll let you want bits of it, but I should bring you back when it's all done. Sanding went better than expected actually. I'm just going to use a isopropyl alcohol just to clean out the, the grain because it's all in grain and there's going to be a lot of dust stuck in there. But it's starting to get an idea of how nice this is going to look. We've got a lot of raggedy bits on the edge, but we're going to sort out all of this when well, we've got the inside hollowed out. No point in doing it before then. There you go. Let's let that evaporate. Okay, that's about to dry now. Now I've got a, a mineral oil and beeswax finish, which we use quite a few times. You can see I'm getting quite low on it. It's a nice nourishing wax that is gonna really work into this grain. It's not going to give it a high shine, but I don't think this piece needs a high shine. It is food safe and it's going to mean it's going to have lots of uses in the future. 
I'll do this two or three coats because this is all ingrained so it's going to suck it up quite quickly. Right, I'll get these coats on and then I shall bring you back when it's time to do the hollowing out. But so far, I'm quite happy. I'll let this soak in for a little while. Now I'll rub it back and then I'll put another coat on. Okay, we've turned around. We've got tailstock for support. We've sharpened up. Now we're gonna get this flat to start off with. And then after that, we're gonna start hollowing it out, but we're gonna, rather than working right from the edge, we're gonna be working more from this area here because the edges are already quite thin and I don't want to get it uh, too thin up here because this is end grain and that has the possibility of snapping off without uh, without any warning. So we want to try and avoid that. So I'm going to start probably around the midpoint there, working in. Right, but first of all, let's get this flat. So I want to try and not touch too much on the wings on the extremities for now and I'll just start creating a shape going into the center from about here inwards. Uh, we'll worry about that towards the end feathering it in and evening it up but it's actually gonna be quite interesting to see to watch this take shape or to change shape rather. So right we shall make a start. I'm just going to sharpen up once more because uh, cutting across end grain is certainly hard on the ball gouge. One side of this must be a little bit longer than the other because we're hitting that much width on that end compared to that much width on this end. So we have to keep an eye on that to see if that causes us any problems. But the shape's appearing, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm not going to worry too much about this area yet. I really want to finalise what I'm doing upon the extremities first before I start worrying about this, because as soon as I start taking out this bit, then it won't give me as much stability to work on the wings. So, we'll get there. All right, sharpen up again. Right up to the wings. Oh, oh dear. I don't know whether to continue using the ball gouge to get these last little bits or whether or not I should get the scraper in there to take them on. Or should I just send them off? <laughs> That's a coward's way. Right, let's just see if I can do it with a bowl gouge. Let's get my ear. Uh, nice and close. Right. Oh, 
Hit it. Nearly. Nearly. <laughs> Nearly. Okay. All right. Oh, I thought I'd, I really thought I'd got them all. Right, another go. Okay, all right, that's good enough for me. All right, they look absolutely beautiful. Yes, we're going to have a reasonable amount of sanding on these to get them flattened. Beautiful. But that's fine. That's fine. Right, we can start ticking down the rest of this. I'm just going to sharpen up again. progress as you can see is going pretty well uh, we're nearly through to the center it's nearly time to start thinking about taking the tail stock away uh, towards the end we're going to need to do a little bit of cleaning up on these edges probably with a scraper just to get this all nice and flat and smooth and then we have to figure out a way of dealing with these edges but I think I've got a plan for that set up for sanding. I'll let you watch bits of it and I shall bring you back at the end. Ah, it's a good feeling get to the end of a difficult project. It really is. Absolutely over the moon with the way that went. I could not be happier. All right, again, we're gonna clean out the grooves with isopropyl. We'll let it dry and then we'll put the finish off. Okay, that's our time to dry. So we'll go back on with the mineral oil and beeswax finish. I've done some interesting turnings in my time, but this has to rank right up there. It's one of the hardest. I'm sorry, I'm just a kind of a bit speechless at the moment. It was quite unusual. let this sit in here for about 10-15 minutes I'm going to come down and wipe it off let that dry a little bit and then repeat the process maybe two or three times when that's all done I'll bring you back and we'll have a, a final look at this this beautiful thing there we go an end grain Brown heart platter with walnut and oak spliced into it. That's where that crack was running through the piece that uh, destroyed the heart of it. But luckily, we can mend a broken heart. 
I should have saved this one for Valentine's Day, shouldn't I? I'm really pleased with the way this one's come out. It's just such a, a gorgeous feeling piece of wood. And it looks, well, it looks far better than I ever thought it could do. I wasn't sure if we were gonna succeed with this shape, but uh, I'm really glad we persevered. It wasn't easy, it really wasn't easy, but it was certainly worth the effort. Please let me know in the description what you think about it. And remember, if you do leave a note in the description, you are gonna be entered into the giveaway when we get to the next milestone, which we haven't decided yet. It's probably gonna be about 25,000 subscribers, but I haven't set a final date yet. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I've had an absolute incredible time making this. It's been a challenge from start to end, but I do like to try new things. I do like to try and push myself as far as I can just to see what's possible and what's not. Anyway, uh, as you're watching this video, this is uh, released on a Tuesday as ever. Uh, I think there's still three auctions left to run uh, on eBay. They've got a few days left. I'll leave the descriptions down below if you want to get uh, one of my pieces. Uh, I don't usually sell my work, but I've been asked that many times that I did put three items on eBay and I think I'm gonna follow it up with a few more. And if you want this to go on eBay, just let me know again in the comments and I shall put this on it as well. Uh, but apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, I would really appreciate uh, like and subscribe and all those kind of things. And if you could share it as well, that would be absolutely incredible. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.